next. We're going to do uh, Mr. Danny. Are you still in the house here? I am in the house. Hello, Denzel. I am uh, 54. I have my own business. I've been a business owner for 30 years. Um, I pay myself a salary. So my income is from a salary is 5,600 a month that I take home. And then I'm pulling out about 2,000 extra a month because I have a, a 45K HELOC that I use to uh, buy things. Um, former Dave Ramsey got became debt-free back in 2009. The only debt I have now is my home. Everything else, I if I purchase it, I purchase it cash. Nice. Love it. So mean? my HELOC. the HELOC is 4.5%. The home, what I owe, what's left on it is $296,075. Mm -hmm. It's okay. valued at about 450000 And I have a, the 45K HELOC on it what's the with the 4.5%. Same as the HELOC? That's the, uh, I just have the one. HELOC 44 right, right. at 4.5 percent. The loan, no, the, excuse me, the mortgage is at 3.86 percent. It's a 15 year. And I only known, I only stumbled across you at the beginning of this month, and I had just re changed it to a 15 year in December of 19. So you went from a 30 to a 15? Yes. Got it. Because I've been paying off, I've been paying, I was paying an extra thousand. A month towards it so now i'm just paying an extra 500 because i shortened it knocked out some of that interest but i prefer doing your velocity banking it's very the numbers make great sense to me and infinite the infinite banking concept is is very intriguing mm -hmm. so uh, all i'm working with is the 5600 right uh no that i can pay myself an extra two thousand I can take more. Uh, so I have a 2000 plus cash flow. Um, I have to the 2K that you pay yourself, or from 5600, you cash flow too? From the. No. 76. Think of it as think of it as 76 with 5600 in expenses. So I have 2000 cash flow. Perfect. Okay, got it. I have 28K in cash. 28K. Just on st standby. Yep. And your your goal is just, hey, I, I, I want to knock out this property. That's it. I want to knock out the property, be debt free. And then I had done some real estate investing 10 years ago, but I had a bad partner. Things went sour, lost all that. And so I want to get back into it. But once I have my home, my kingdom taken care of got it you're going to use your home as 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 leverage to go back into the real estate investing is that the idea i would prefer the the whole life oh, policy got it got it versus the home i would once the home is paid off i will leverage it if i need to but mm -hmm. i would really like to keep that asset protected just have the equity just kind of right out there Okay, um, so let's see, cash flow two k, so that's twenty four k a year, and I got twenty eight k cash on hand. How, uh, is there a balance on the HELOC right now? Uh, yes, it's uh, fifteen thousand eight hundred and six dollars. Okay, you said you recently refinanced the home from a thirty to a fifteen year. Recently, how long ago was that? December 2019, eight months yeah. ago. And you went from a you know, higher rate to 3.86. Correct. Okay, so 3.86, 4.5 on the HELOC. Let's see. And there's a lot of equity I'm assuming the value is worth 450 I owe 296 I got 45k 
Um, I, I see it um, mathematically. It would make sense to probably do a good maybe one to two chunks using the HELOC on the on the property. But I know at, at one point, I'm going to want to probably upgrade that HELOC to probably a first position HELOC. Okay. Because, or an all-in-one loan at like a fixed rate of like maybe 3.75 or like 4% for like five years, have it revolving for 10. Um, and then have that tool to help me fund IBC to then borrow out of IBC to buy real estate. Okay. What type of real estate or what, what you know, type of real estate investing do you want to get into? I want something that's going to not require a lot of management, but generate cash flow. So maybe it's something different than real estate. But I was, I know real estate, once if I acquire it, I know it's long term. Mm -hmm. It is a revenue generating asset. Yeah. Because I know if I want to do it with, um, you know, using infinite banking, obviously, it's going to, you know, take me some time to build up the policy itself. You know, like I was telling um, the other couple just now, Eddie and Amber, um, does take time to, especially if I need capital for real estate to, you know, buy proper T's, you know, like plural. Um, I think it wouldn't hurt to have the ability to use both the you know maybe a portion of the equity of my property and infinite banking at the same time you know one funds the other in a way okay so that might be something to consider um but as of right now i owe 15k right now so my focus is just doing velocity banking knocking that down to zero um did you actually make a chunk on your own recently using it or I did. It was at 21. So I dumped what I had in the bank towards it. And I took out the 2000 and, and dumped it. And the bank said, Oh, you don't need to do a payment. You've just made a payment. And I said, no, still apply it to the right, principal. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I do have a very good relationship with the a senior VP at the bank. I can walk mm -hmm. in and say, Hey, I need this. And because my, my personal and my business is, has been with them for five years. I can get it pretty much immediately. Uh, and what state are you in and what bank? Virginia. Okay. Virginia is the state. First bank is uh, the local bank. First bank. Awesome. First bank. I've heard of them. All right. So are there any questions on the process of Velocity Bank or did, you, or did that pretty much click after watching a couple of videos over the last... You know, well, I've... I am a manifesto and I probably binge binge watched half of it already. Oh, wonderful. Okay. And legal shield. I signed up for that as well. Yes. I, okay. Now I see. Yep. I, I just saw, uh, uh, the other day I had seen your name. So I was like, Oh, this might be the same Danny. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So we'll, we'll have to have, did I send you an email so far, uh, you know, setting up a, a private one-on-one -on -one call? Did you get that email from me? I don't know. I don't recall. I've seen uh, quite a few emails from you. Yeah, I really don't sorry. know, but I between my business and okay. other emails, I might have missed it. All right. I'll, I'll be sure to resend it again. Okay. Because, um, Actually, I'll, yes. Uh, I did see know. that, but it's not until like September 23rd. Uh, that phone call was okay. this yeah that's what's the soonest forgive me a lot of people man <laughs> i know you're busy yeah but no we're, we're doing stuff like this so this this you know helps uh kind of position ourselves for what we want to do with that and you know velocity banking knocking out debt so um so you made a 21k chunk towards the property already no that was what was already outstanding Oh, so I, I started doing velocity banking to get it knocked oh, down. Got it. Got it. So I can do a velocity true real. Yeah, 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 yeah. chunk, which 66% would put me at a, a $29,000 chunk. But 
I need to, I know you, you say you want to do it for six to nine months. So I didn't go back and figure out if that 29 would. 29, would be in the 29, 29 seems a bit high because usually what we're, what we're hitting right now is a big debt. So there is no cash flow gain. Um, we can play around with the numbers. So all we need to do is get the amortization schedule for this new 15 year. You're, you're exactly eight months into it, right? That you've been paying. Correct. So, so you're at the height of the interest, even though it's, even though 4.5 is higher than 3.8. When I chunk, that makes all the difference than just, you know, making extra payments. I, I can go a little faster here. And, um, since you do have a very nice relationship with the bank, I might also want to consider introducing a credit card into your strategy as well. Um, yes, I've talked with uh, already talked with Brittany Green, and she has a plan for me, and so I'm going to start following that. Love it Love because it. I, my score dropped down. I was at about 720, and it dropped down to 690 when I did the the refinance in December, 2019. Right. That's a hit. Got it. Yep. But I okay. show no other credit debt because I've been paying everything cash for the last 10 years, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which it's good, but then it's like not so good credit wise. Cause it's like, you're not using credit. So not a whole right. lot of you know, history there, which it's like, you know, that kind of sucks, but uh, you know, then probably three to six months I can, I can rebound that credit. And like I said, introducing a credit card. So what I mean by that is just getting like a 0% credit card on purchases and or balance transfers and possibly running, say, certain annual bills that would save me money if I paid it annual. And it also gives me cash back rewards. And if I get like a 12 month, zero interest, 15 months, zero interest, then that's temporary cash flow, right? You just pay the monthly minimum on the credit card. And then that's more cash flow that gets to sit in the HELOC, which allows you to, you know, make a chunk faster. So by the time I get to the expiration date on the credit card, HELOC's at zero or close to it. I have enough, you know, uh, space in my line of credit to just wipe out the credit card. The other strategies, I can just do it again. I get another credit card. And so essentially all I'm doing is floating my bills on credit, 0%, getting cash back rewards, managing it, right? We don't want to get too many credit cards at once. Usually I just tell people one is good, you know, get your feet wet. Um, you know, you ma manage it, you pay the monthly payment, <clears throat> excuse me. And that puts you that much ahead of debt snowball, you know, it gives it a little bit more, you know, extra wiggle room and you're able to get ahead of that interest on that amortized property that just got refinanced. All right. So it should take me roughly, uh, I mean, you've been doing velocity banking for what, two months now you went from 21. Now you're down to 15. So no, two weeks, two weeks. Okay. Okay. Cause you, you had some extra cash on hand, I'm assuming. I, I still have plenty of extra cash on hand, but I haven't, I didn't, I'm not doing anything with it until I really talk with you and get a plan. And it just so happens that we're talking now. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. So with the 28,000 built up, um, you're 54. So we could potentially introduce the, uh, the infinite banking concept because you did say you could i you know conservatively or, or healthily is that a word uh take out more than 2k out of the business to have more cash easily like yes okay. I, I i have probably just setting aside in the business right now close to 30 that's just idle right that i'm Same building way. up got it so in my head i'm thinking i could safely design an infinite banking policy dumping in maybe 20 grand a year with the ability to go higher 
but not be required to in any way. Um, and, and you've been watching some material so far on, on the infinite banking concept. Yes. Right? In, in my program, maybe on IPC Global and other channels as Both. well. Uh, wonderful. So I think we could safely introduce infinite banking to get it rolling while simultaneously doing velocity banking on the HELOC with my day-to-day -day incoming cash flow that I normally rock with. And then I just, you know, money's coming in, money's going out. Should take me about four to six months or less to bring this HELOC back down to zero or close to it. And a healthy chunk amount would be like 21, 22K or I can go right up to the 66% range if I'm comfortable with that. Now that I, you know, we're, we're revealing some more information here, we've got more cash to work with. So I'm not really strapped to the 2K. I could have more, could have less, but um, really no less than uh, 2000, you would say, right? No less than that. I, I that's no like, less than that. I've been giving myself that for the last two years. Got it. So. I like it. So we can introduce velocity, infinite banking at the same time. So if I do a, if I do a 20 K, I, I can pull 20 from the 28 that I have establish infinite banking and then give it a purpose. What am I going to use that for? I have a couple of options. Either I can, uh, just simply save it, store it and start building it up now. Or I can potentially run certain expenses through the policy to create cash flow, or just simply use it to chunk directly at the property. Or loan it back to the company. Or loan it back to the company and use it to 10x. Right. Because that's what I was watching. That, I just watched that video prior to finish that video just prior to jumping on this. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. What, what do you what do you do for your business? You've been in business thirty years. Yeah, I do uh, I'm a network engineer. I do computer repair. Is the simplest way to to say it. So high end networking. I've done work for international companies. And then you, you did you start off that like that was your career, and then you branched off, started your own thing. I my. When I but when I graduated high school, before I even graduated, I signed myself up to go into the military at 17, went to the military for a couple of years, got out, went to work for a defense contractor for a year, and then started my first business in computer repair and been a business owner since April 14th of 1989. Wow, that's awesome. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Oh, great. My goal is to be like that too. 30 years of business doing this stuff and talking to people. And so, you know, pray for me. I shall. And Lord puts that covering and keeps me safe and healthy and doing the right thing. So uh, any questions so far on the chunk amount or the infinite banking side of things um, or even the legal shield, anything that comes up or is the stuff clicking, this is making sense. That it's making sense. The math makes sense. It just we need to. I need to schedule a time to get with you and. Yeah, I, I do want. To, I do want to play with the numbers. I definitely need to get that Excel. We need to get the. Get I have the that filled out. Yeah, we want to get the amortization schedule for the for the home just to see. Okay, what would a, what would a twenty k chunk do to the to the interest? What would a twenty nine k do? How long does it take me to pay back the the twenty nine? I, I I usually like to have a six to nine month range on average of whatever my chunk amount is i'm able to pay that back meaning bring it down to zero or at least close to it because when i'm dealing with a heloc i do bring up that argument where we don't necessarily have to wait to hit zero to make that next chunk by say removing escrow from the property so are you currently paying uh escrow insurance is it all bundled in one Yes, it is. So we could introduce uh, removing that, paying it ourselves and have more money on a on a month to month basis 
and then just pay it ourselves in full when it's due and we have a couple of options. Option one, I could pay it, I could pay it out the policy and not pay back the loan. Just let it sit there for a couple of years until the mortgage is paid off and then I replenish myself. And that's like a really cool little faster way to knock out the property. All right. Option two is I can run that particular expense through the HELOC. And um, how much would you say your, uh, you know, insurance and taxes are on the property? In I year? think when I looked at it, it was about 289 to three, 289 to 300. My monthly payment is a 2558. So that would knock me down to about 22. So what would that be per year? What was that like 3600 or 3000? Uh, 33600. Yep. If we just go with three hundred dollars, yeah, yeah, okay. So then, uh, one interesting thing, and and I, I think I went over it in the manifesto on, uh, I think it was a, uh, the section all the way at the bottom. I think it's called velocity banking versus debt snowball two point or something like that. Where okay. uh, you can check that out. Where basically, I have the situation where. The 3600, so let's say I did a 29K chunk or a 25K chunk, whatever my chunk was. And I and obviously I remove escrow from the mortgage. I pay that myself. When I actually go to pay it, like I said, I could pay it out of the policy or I can pay it out of the HELOC, the, the 3600. And then when I reach 3600 on my HELOC, that's my new zero. Because $3,600 principal on the mortgage, all we have to do is see, okay, how much interest does that save me when I dump an extra 36 on it, right? Mm -hmm. And then I do the math on 3,600 times 4.5%, right? So 3,600 times 4.5%. Let me get that right, so 100 see 162 yeah $162 divided by 365 that's 44 cents a day that I get charged to keep a running balance on my HELOC at $3,600 versus that same $3,600 sitting in the principal on the home that could save me probably an extra maybe thousand or two thousand in interest let's just say so that means every time i'm chunking when i hit 36 i chunk instead of having to wait to hit zero that saves me like another two months i just go hit that you know mortgage up following year do it again my new zero becomes 3600 times two Right. Right. And if I'm applying for increases on the HELOC because I'm creating so much equity, I could potentially within one to two years from now easily convert to either an all in one loan or convert to a first position HELOC at a preferred introductory rate like these HELOCs do these nice, cool, really cool intro rates of like 2.99% or 3% or 3.25 introductory rate. Then, right, uh, now I've replaced the entire mortgage from amortized to simple interest and at a lower rate. Now I'm just dumping my whole 70 600 or whatever I pay myself just sits in there. And that does help automate the velocity banking process where it's like, you don't have to worry about put money in, taking money out. You can set it up to directly deposit into the HELOC and set bill pay up to come right out of the HELOC. And that helps money stay in that HELOC for a longer period of time, helping you obviously knock the balance down. Simultaneously, I got 
infinite banking going, whether it's just to simply stack the, the money up so that I can eventually use it for real estate later or using it to do like a little bit of double chunking in a way where I'm chunking with the HELOC, I'm chunking with the policy. Okay. The only difference, the only difference with the policy is that I would set it up where I don't necessarily pay back the loans right away. I'll replenish it once the mortgage is paid off because all, all I would be doing is shifting the balance of the mortgage to infinite banking, to the HELOC. That's all I'm doing. Just, you know, shifting it out of amortized to simple interest or no interest. And then obviously, you know, getting out of it at a, at a faster rate, ultimately hitting your goal, which is just to be done with the property. I just want to right. get off, get the, get the cash flow gain. What's the, what's the mortgage payment on that? Uh, with everything, it's twenty five fifty eight. Got it. Twenty five fifty eight. Cool. Any other questions? No. It's a All right. Lot of but, great information. Yeah. So I think we have something you know really good. Hopefully, we're taking some good notes. If not, this is going to be recorded anyways.